architect Divya Chakravarti. She completed her undergraduate studies from SRM University and she went on to pursue her masters in historic preservation and urbanism and study of the built environment from the University of California, Los Angeles. She went on to work for the Department of Planning and Preservation for the city of Pasadena, California. She also did a brief stint of work for Historic Scotland, Edinburgh, UK. She also worked on conservation projects like Kalsa Mahal, Gokhale Hall in Chennai and Marimala Pa Educational Trust in Mysore. She is currently working as a director of Samrakshan Heritage Consultancy. She is also a co-founder of the Artisan Reprisal of Traditional Materials. method and technology she goes on to conduct workshops to revive traditional and lost methods of construction welcome to the ugc lecture series for bachelors of architecture the subject we are discussing is human settlements planning the topic we shall be starting off with is forms of human settlements in this topic we shall be studying structure and form of human settlements linear non-linear and circular patterns structure and form of human settlements living cities have intrinsically fractal properties in common with all living systems the building of cities has a long and complex history although city planning as an organized profession has existed for less than a century most cities display various degrees of forethought and conscious design in their layout and functioning How can you go about describing different settlements? The factors mainly we'll talk about are area, how large is the area of a settlement. Next, site. This describes the actual land upon which a settlement is built. The third factor, population. The size as well as the type of people that is the demographic, the ethnicity, what kind of people are going to live in that settlement. Shape. describes how the settlement is laid out it's basically a pattern situation describes where a settlement is located in relation to other surrounding features such as settlements rivers and communications finally the most important function the function of a settlement relates to its economic and social development and refers to its main activities all these elements together will come up about how a settlement is going to be and even decide the future of that settlement the first pattern we'll be seeing is dispersed settlements a dispersed settlement refers to the scattering of houses over a large area there's no particular pattern that emerges so you will obviously not have any concrete roads or anything like that it's just without any particular direction there will be dwelling units this is how it would be this is usually in farm lands or in hilly areas occurs in rural areas develops in hilly areas extensive flat lands or rolling plains the next pattern is linear settlements a linear settlement pattern refers to the grouping of houses along a line here in this case in this diagram the line is a river but it needn't be a river it could be a railway line that is very important it could be a river it could be a, any other water body it could even end up being a communication line that's very important or a highway that's come about so anything that supports these dwelling units and along that main support line or that spine of the settlement occurs it is a linear settlement though this tends to follow roads railway tracks along the coast or a river this is found in both rural as well as urban areas because it provides good transport and communication network the example of linear city is navi mumbai the navi mumbai is obviously grown along this particular spine many government and corporate offices have come about from shifted from bombay to mumbai because of that reason the third pattern is nucleated settlements a nucleated settlement pattern refers to the grouping of many houses around a central area called a nucleus so these are roads and at the core of that road at the junction you have the settlement pattern these roads needn't be normal roads when you look at it it could be highways it could be a very important one could be an important railway line and one could be a roadway 
So the bro just signifies a main linkage. This is developed at road intersections, focal points of an area or confluences of rivers. This grows in size to form a market town in the rural area. Towns and cities may develop into urban centers and increase in the number of functions. Radial towns, dwellings are located around the center. Streets circle around these dwelling units. The main building used to be on top of a small hill. The main building is usually in olden days was either the palace or the institutional building or a place of worship. These days it could end up being an institutional building with respect to the government or even a educational institution. Towns around the center, the center can be a square or town hall. A town hall is nothing but your basic building that houses all your government activities. Radial city example of that is Moscow. This is one of the world's biggest megapolis. The Russian Moscow is the capital of Russia. The city grew in pattern of rings and radials that has marked Moscow's growth from both ancient times to the current modern layout. The center of all rings is Moscow Kremlin and the famous Red Square. So in spite of it being an old town that has emerged over a period of time, you can see that it's grown in the same pattern. This is the current uh, layout of Moscow and this is Moscow in 1893. In terms of layout, yes, it's obviously become bigger. but the radial pattern still continues. Successive epochs of development are traced by the boulevard ring, the garden ring, the Moscow little ring railway and the Moscow ring road. So all of this is still helping maintaining Moscow as a radial pattern city. Now combinations, combinations of these patterns are other emergent patterns that have happened over a period of time. The term urban sprawl has been used to describe a variety of urban forms including contiguous suburban growth, linear patterns of strip development as well as leapfrog or scattered development. These forms are typically associated with patterns of clustered, non-traditional centers based on out of town malls, edge cities and new town and communities. These various urban forms often presented in the literature as poorer, less sustainable or less economically efficient towns. Urban form and structure are the patterns and spatial arrangements of land use, transportation systems and urban design elements which includes the physical urban context, the layout of streets, the buildings as well as the internal configuration of settlements. So within urban sprawl what kind of types of forms have emerged. This is the compact development where you actually have everything closely knit. This could be because of lack of space in a city like Bombay when space is an issue the density would be much greater. This is the scattered development where space is not an issue you can grow in any which way possible. The outer uh, limit is defined by the limits of the settlement. In terms of there could be another settlement there, there could be a natural uh, characteristic there, it could be a roadway or a railway. So that is what decides the boundary of these settlements. Linear strip development, it could be because of a particular motorway, it could be because of a particular existence of a major industrial belt or a commercial area. This is leapfrogging development where you actually start off with having a nucleus but then without any cohesion. It jumps all over the place and hence the term leapfrog. Initially it could start off because of a particular uh, arterial road or a main suburban area but then without any cohesion the other developments come into being. Polynucleated development. Instead of having one nucleus or one central part of the city that gets distributed into four parts and the city henceforth clusters around each nucleus. So it is polynucleated development. Now what are the basic site factors? When we are talking of settlements, how are these factors coming into being? Some sites had specific advantages that meant settlements developed in that place. These are called site factors. Bridging point where a river was shallow enough to be crossed so a ford or a narrow enough bridge or road can be built. This happened in Oxford. So if you actually look, if the bridge was not possible, 
this town could have not been established so this is the first point the bridging point next dry point in especially wet areas settlements were built on a highly raised land to avoid flooding or unhealthy marshland this is eli in cambridgeshire you can see again because of flooding that could occur it's been raised the site itself has been raised so even during monsoon if the river do does tend to flood it will not affect the settlement point then you have the nodal point where natural routes meet such as several valleys example york or at the confluence of two rivers at st louis on mississippi so when two rivers meet at a particular point this could be a very good fertile junction that will occur or it could be various valleys in the mountain ways defensive in order to protect themselves from attack settlements were often built within a river meander with the river giving protection on three sides example shrewsbury or it's either located on a hill with good views such as edinburgh so this actually makes sure you are avoid invasions from people because you have rivers and on one side you could either be on a hill or a raised platform wet point these settlements were built at a source of water on an otherwise dry area for example in lowland britain many settlements were built at springs at the foot of the chalk escarpments for example kensing pat near the north downs aspect and shelter settlements were built in sheltered areas such as valleys or in bays on coastal locations aspect was also an important consideration settlements would be more ideally located on south facing slopes in the northern hemisphere and vice versa how important are these physical site factors discussed today technology means that many site factors are no longer very critical in influencing the site of a settlement for example water can be piped road networks allow for the delivery of food supplies via supermarkets computers and the internet can provide communication political social or economic factors are usually more important these days defense is not an issue you when you are talking about nuclear weapons and things like that needing to put a city on top of a mountain is not required for defense so now as we are becoming a technologically driven society even the factors that assign that decide where a settlement is going to start off will change decide talk about urban form and how it actually emerges it can be defined as spatial pattern of human activities at a certain point in time here time as a dimension is very important because over the past 100 years the urban form has changed tremendously so the point of time the time dimension is very crucial urban form is a term used to describe the physical elements within a city it refers to the arrangement function and aesthetic qualities of the design of buildings and streets which overlay the land use and transport system generally urban forms can be classified in various dimensions however the four key metrics that is density land use mix connectivity and accessibility are very important urban density it is the measure of an urban unit of interest example population employment and housing per area unit with the units could be block neighborhood city metro area or finally the country there are many measures of density and three common measures are population density that is population per unit area built up area density that is what percentage is open area and what percentage is the built up area and employment density very crucial for deciding the economic future of the city jobs per unit area land use mix it refers to the diversity and integration of land uses example residential park commercial at a given scale as with density there are multiple measures of land use mix including the first point is the ratio of jobs to residents the variety and mixture of amenities and activities the relative proportion of retail and housing so it's not enough that people exist in a city if they do not live happily and cohesively in that environment the city will soon die and decay if people tend to move out so it's very important that there is good level of employment 
very good activities and amenities for both commercial and entertainment factors the relative proportion of retail and housing it can't be a bedroom community where there's a completely a residential area and people have to travel to work vice versa it cannot be a completely commercial area where people find it that it shuts down after a particular time and it becomes barren after office hours connectivity this refers to street density and design common measures of connectivity include intersection density or proportion block size or intersections per road kilometer where street connectivity is high characterized by finer grain systems with smaller blocks that allow frequent changes in direction there is typically a positive correlation with walking and thereby less pollution which makes it more environment and eco friendly accessibility this can be defined as access to job housing services shopping and in general to people and places in cities it can be viewed as a combination of proximity and travel and is closely related to land use mix common measures of accessibility include population centrality job accessibility by auto or transit distance to the city center or the central business district or cbd so basically it is important that one person can achieve all of his activities in that time frame without too much time wasted in travel not only time but also energy not only physical energy but also the energy pertaining to natural resources like fuel so all of this together cohesively provides how accessible is a settlement types of form based on density and physical configuration a variety of urban forms can be described using a typology based on two continuous dimensions which are made discrete for explanatory purposes number 1 settlement density and second very important physical configuration which ranges from contiguous and compact to scattered and discontinuous so if you look at the types of form based on density and physical configuration you have the compact continuous which is circular or radial using mass transit low density it is possible but very rare linear strip corridor corridor development around the mass transit is again an issue over here ribbon development along radial routes polynucleated nodal urban nodes divided by green belts low density metro regions with new towns so what happens is you start creating a important town and smaller towns like satellite towns will emerge scattered discontinuous possible but again very rare metro regions with edge cities now theories explaining how towns are arranged the first is the grid model the first example we'll discuss is the city of priam this was proposed by hypodamus of miletus who is considered the father of rational city planning the center of the city contains the agora which is the marketplace then you have the theaters and the temples private rooms are sur surround the city's public arenas the private rooms are nothing but individual dwelling units the plan can be laid out uniformly over any kind of terrain since it's based on angles and measurements so site factors are least bothersome here this is the grid model of prian city you can see this is the main core and around which how it develops and the roads and streets develop at right angles the grid iron city it is composed of straight streets crossing at right angles to create many regular city blocks this form is typical of cities built after after the industrial revolution because only then did cities place such importance on economic activity a city grid iron plan facilitates the movement of people and product throughout the city the advantages high accessibility minimum disruption of flow expansion facilities so what happens is a kind of module is created now this module can be repeated n number of times as the city expands versus if it's a radial city it has to be an entire concentric ring that will emerge which makes it more far away from the center adaptability to a level or moderate rolling terrain so it's very important that there is a kind of moderately rolling terrain is present such that the flat city also needn't be important but it can be 
it can't work as a hilly region because the main reason being a hilly region will make sure that the scope of the straight angles is not possible. So even though a flat terrain works, a mildly plateauist or a slightly raised level will work, but not a mountainous region. Now, if you look at the disadvantages, requires flow of hierarchies, it's linked to its adaptability to the terrain and potentially it is monotonous. Exactly what we discussed as an advantage is also a disadvantage. As these modules can be repeated again and again, that creates a sense of monotony. Now, the gridiron city example we have is the city of San Francisco. The main districts that emerged are the office district, retail district, general commercial district and the support district. Support district was basically created to help office, retail and general commercial district run. So you have both grids as well as certain amounts of irregular patterns can be seen in San Francisco. And the main reason that happens is because it's slightly on a hilly part. The next important model is the urban realms model. Again, this was developed by ja James Vance Jr. in the 1960s. And this also was developed for the San Francisco Bay Area. Each realm is a separate economic, social and political entity that is linked together to form a large metro framework. Suburbs are within the sphere of influence of the central city and its metropolitan central business district. Now urban realms have become so large that they have exurbs, not just suburbs. So if you actually look at the urban realm, it depends on the overall size of the metropolitan region, amount of economic activity in each suburban realm, topography and major land features, internal accessibility of each realm. So if you look over here, you have these edge cities and this is the central business district. So these could be even referred to as satellite towns or otherwise even known as edge cities because no longer the population is completely supported by the central business town. So a newer downtown will emerge. You can see these hatched areas over, they are the new downtowns that have emerged to help support these edge cities. So becomes multinucleated as well as new realms or new rings are formed which are not concentric in nature but because of the terrain they are formed as irregular patterns. Core frame model. The core frame model is a model showing the urban structure of the CBD of a town or a city. The model includes an inner core where land is expensive and used intensively. So that's where you will find the skyscrapers and the taller buildings. The outer core and frame have lower land values and are less intensively developed. Various land uses are linked to the bid rent theory. This is the core formula. So A, you have better residential properties. B, you have heavy industry and poor residential. So A is good residential because it's away from the central business district. So there will be better houses, larger houses versus the second core. If you look at it, this is zone of the inner core is here, then you have the outer core and this is the frame of the city. So this is the zone of discard. Zone of discard is where all your services would occur and here is the zone of assimilation. So this proves to be a linkage between the suburban area to the central business district or the higher offices. The bid rent theory follows geographical economic theory that refers to how the price and demand for real estate changes as the distance from the CBD changes. This is based upon the idea that retail establishments wish to maximize their profitability. So they are much more willing to be paying better or higher land rates to be closer to the CBD and less for the land away from this area. The amount they are willing to pay is called the bid rent. So what this is consumer driven. This kind of theory is completely consumer driven because as in the population of the central business district increases, as the acceptance of it increases, the rent will also increase. But once it reaches a plateau and it starts declining, the reverse will start happening. As say the multinucleated theory follows and another CBD is following up, then the bid rent theory will apply such that, that the shops, the commercial areas, the rent will start dropping and people will want to move out. 
this is the CBD again. The darkest portion you have the CBD distance from the center as it increases. So if you see XX, the rent is high such that they are, this is the willing commerce they are willing to pay. So as you go more farther away, the rent drops down. So if you look at zone one, this is the central business district with commerce and offices. If you look at zone two, it consists of the industries and zone three is residential with highest density closer to the center. So even within zone three, as you move away, the density will also decrease. Irregular pattern model. Arrangement of public space that characterizes the stage of transition from village to city, especially in the third world. This urban model is due to lack of planning or construction and which is even illegal without a particular specific order. So it's basically in a way can be considered organic. Without any predefined plans, these patterns emerge. Includes blocks with no fixed border or permanent and temporary structures. Structures are not related to an urban center near the place. Now we'll move on to the zonal model, the concentric ring model. The concentric ring model is model of the internal structure of cities in which social groups are spatially arranged in a series of rings. The concentric model was the first to explain the distribution of different social groups within a particular urban area. It was originally based off Chicago, although it no longer applies to Chicago and we'll see the reason why. The model was created in 1923 by Burgess, Robert Park and Roderick McKenzie. The idea behind the model is that the city grows outward from a central area in a series of rings. The size of the rings may vary, but the order will mostly remain the same. This model also suggests that the social structure extends outwards from the CBD, meaning that the lower classes live closer to the city center versus the upper classes live far away from the city because they can afford to commute. Also, as you move farther away from the city, the density also decreases, which means you can have bigger houses. The rent tends to increase as you get farther and away from the CBD and residents are more likely to rent near the center. As you get further away from the CBD, it is most likely that you will find condominiums, which is owned apartment complexes and no more rented properties. Indianapolis is a city that can be applied to the concentric model today. That is because more people rent near the CBD rather than away from it. However, this model does have its weaknesses. It does not take into account any physical barriers and it does not take into account gentrification which may occur in these cities. Gentrification is actually a process where a poor area or an economically backward area is suddenly regenerated to make it an upper class area. Outward expansion of CBD would invade nearby residential neighborhoods, causing them to expand outward. The process was thought to continue with each successive neighborhood moving further away from the business district. It is suggested that inner city housing was largely occupied by immigrants and households with low socioeconomic status. As the city grew and CBD expanded outward, Lower status residents moved to adjacent neighborhoods and more affluent residents moved away from the business district. Burge's work is based on the bid rent curve. Like we just saw, this theory states that concentric circles are based on the amount that people will pay for the land. This value is based on the profits that are obtainable from maintaining a business on that land. The center of the town will have the highest number of customers, so it's profitable for retail activities. Manufacturing will pay slightly less for the land as they're only interested in the accessibility for workers. Goods are coming in and goods are going out. So residential land use will take the surrounding land. So that's clearly demarcation of every particular zone. Assumptions made are, you assume an isotropic plane and therefore transportation is equally cheap. Land near the centers of higher value than the land at the suburbs. Building age is one move to, to the city center. There exists well-defined separation either ethnically or economically. So a caste distinction comes in. Those who can afford transport live away from the center. There is no concentration of heavy industries. 
limitations, the model has been challenged by many contemporary urban geographers. First, the model does not work well with cities outside the United States, in particular those developed under different historical contexts. Even within the US, because of changes such as advancement in transportation and IT technology, transformation in the global economy, cities are no longer organized with such clear zones. This is the concentric ring model. You have first, you have the CBD proper, then the fringe of CBD, then the zone in transition or the gray zone, lower income housing, higher income housing and the commuters zone. This is the Burgess model again from uh, intensely high density to low density, low rent to high rent. At the end of this lecture, we have covered structure and form of settlements and we have looked into linear, non-linear and circular patterns. At the end of this lecture, we should be able to answer the following questions. How can we describe settlements? Discuss the classification of settlements. What are the types of forms by urban sprawl? What is CBD? Discuss the concentric ring model of human settlement. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you.